I would like to invite uh, Dr. Kirti, uh, A.S. Kirti. He is a professor of uh, uh, pediatrics at uh, SVRR Government General Hospital, Tirupati. So, sir, I would like you to take over. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Boli. Thank you, sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. At the outset, I thank um, uh, N uh, NNF and uh, and the Minister of Health and Family Welfare (NHM) people for and, and UNICEF for inviting me to present a talk on continuous positive airway pressure. Uh, let me say acknowledgments to. Kalavati Saran Children's Hospital, New Delhi, and NN of India, and the Minister of Health and Family of the Government of India. So, what is continuous positive airway pressure? So, how we are breathing? Anybody? Uh, you can chart in between, you can chart the question, you can chart and you can say answers in chart box. Okay. How we are breathing? How we are breathing? So, by inhale, inhalation, what will happen? The diaphragm will move down diaphragm will contact and uh, diaphragm will move down so so then the negative pressure is in, is initiated in the lungs our lungs okay so we once it is negative pressure is there and the air from the environment suck into the lungs that is negative airway pressure so that is here we are giving positive airway pressure because forcibly we are sending the air into the lung that is that's why it is continuously we are sending the positive pressure inside the lungs. That is, that's why it's called continuous positive airway pressure. So, at the end of the session, you are able to see what are the basic principle, what are the physiological effects of CPAP, and what are the indications and contraindications of CPAP, and you know what are the various parts of bubble CPAP machine and how to assemble it. And that means how to connect it, each, each part, how to connect it, and then how to initiate the therapy to whom you start CPAP, and how to, after initiating the therapy, then how to monitor, and uh, during the monitor, what are the complications you anticipate, then how to manage this. These are things you are able to um, learn at the end of this talk. Am I clear? Okay. So, any use of brand names is not in any way meant for by me, but it is uh, by accidental. But it is only thing my intention is to know what is CPAP and all that. So it is not my fault. So what is CPAP? Continuous airway pressure, continuous positive airway pressure. It delivers a mixture of heated and humidified air. That is heated. Why heated? We have to heat the, uh, the gas because our body temperature will be high, the oxygen temperature will be low. So we have to maintain our body temperature. That's why you are heating the, uh, uh, that is, that is uh, air. So that to 37 degrees, that's a mixture of heated, humidified. We are sending through the water. So that's humidification occurs. Heated, humidified air. So dry, if you, if you blow dry air into the mouth, I mean into the nose, what will happen if you in the summer you can feel? So hot air will be coming in the in the summer season. So our nose will become burning sensitive, we will get burning sensitive. Similarly, if you send the air without, uh, without humidification, the mucosa will be damaged. So that's why you are sending Heated means it is not so much of heat, it is uh, as, per, as per the body temperature and humidified air. It is a mixture of air and oxygen. So we are, we are not giving 100% oxygen, we are mixing the air with the oxygen. That's why you are blending. Blending means mixture of air and oxygen. And to whom you are giving? Those babies who are having spontaneous breathing. Spontaneous breathing should be there. And babies taking breathing. And it will generate what is the purpose of uh, sending this? Uh, though the child is getting uh, taking breathing, why you are sending positive pressure airway, uh, positive pressure air, and that is air plus oxygen into the baby, so that it will distend the 
airways distance the capillary distance the uh, uh, alveoli 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 will be distended so that the already collapsed alveoli will be opened up now that is that is otherwise called recruitment of the alveoli so opening of the alveoli occur so, so this is the and it should be the complete sealed no no leak should be there from the source of the from the blender to the baby salvelle there will not be any leak suppose if there is any leak is there the pressure will not be maintained that is the purpose so now you can understand the definition continuous heat pass to airway pressure is it it is a delivery it delivers a mixture of heated humidified air and oxygen to the spontaneously breathing child and generates a continuous distending pressure throughout this respiratory cycle by means of a sealed interface so, okay sealed interface means it is uh, at the end between the machine to the baby there must be some mediator in between so that is the interface that is inter sealed interface what is the example here that is nasal prongs that is sealed interface okay so i already we discussed it is a blended blended means a mixture of the oxygen and air heated we are heating humidified we are giving 100% relative uh, humidification in delivered via short binasal prongs that is interface that is short binasal and by bi into two nostrils prongs or sometimes mask also nasal sip uh, mask also sometimes so how the pressure is maintained how is the pressure is maintained there is, there are one one minute so there are one one inspiratory limb and one expiratory limb will be there inspiratory limb means the air that is entering into the child lungs and expiratory limb and it is coming out from the child one inspiratory suppose if you insert the inspiratory expiratory limb into into the this is the expiratory limb if you insert the expiratory limb into the water how much depth do you insert that generates the pressure so cpap is generated is equal to depth of the expiratory limb submersion submersion that is inside uh, even putting the tube um, i mean tube expiratory limb into into the water so what is the advantage gas exiting the expiratory tube tubing produces bubbles that generates pressure oscillations which are transmitted to the lungs so if you understand uh, to understand much more better i will show one thing so this is ordinary tube that is two end open tube is open to end so air will enters from this end and will go with the opposite end okay and here there is a t piece the t shaped uh, tube is there t shaped tube so air is entering there is one more the here there are three openings are there in t piece in here is only two openings here three openings are there so air entering but with a bit uh, the opposite uh, end also is a free free opening so air that enters almost most of the air will uh, exit from this root when is little amount of air may sometimes will go to here so in the tps we are, we are connected to the balloon we connected to a balloon in vertical limb we connected to the balloon so little amount of air enters into the suppose if you obstruct the tube that is external exit tube if you obstruct the exit tube completely if you block the come exit tube completely the, the air enters and there is no space there is there is no way the air going out so it turn back and going to the vertical then so so that the balloon will inflate balloon will inflate okay suppose if we, this this obstruction is very partial so air will enters here and um, majority air will go to down vertical limb or very, uh, very small amount of air through this partial obstruction will went out so what you understand here if you this this is inspiratory limb and this is expiratory limb this is inspiratory and this is expiratory this is inspiratory and expiratory here you imagine these are the baby's lungs baby's lungs okay suppose if you uh, if if this suppose this is a ventilator cpap you can consider it as a cpap 
suppose if the if you if there is no obstruction in the uh, expiratory limb so entire amount of, of, of flow will go as as it is to the exit limb very little will go to the baby if you upset completely so entire the whatever the flow you give entire thing will go to the baby and the because it is positive pressure the lungs will inflate so here what will happen you are partially obstructing the tube ex, uh, i mean expiratory tube so so some required amount of uh, uh, air will enter into the lungs baby's lungs so so entire uh, entire air enters because it is dangerous the lungs may burst but only when whatever the requirement um, amount of uh, pressure um, obstruction so that the adequate lung expansion is there we have to adjust with the obstruction so that's why here this is so that's why the uh, expiratory limb is inserted into the water so you are partially obstructing but um, air is going out from the expiratory limb so so that we can see the bubbles in the uh, um, i mean water chamber so that is the expired air okay so that's why some amount of pressure will be developed uh, i mean pressure is developed and this pressure will be transmitted to the lungs so that the lung will expand all airway will expand this is the basic principle behind the cpap or any ventilator whatever may be the everything this is the tps mechanism this is primary uh, principle what are the physiological benefits so so that the i already told you that we partial obstructed so that the lungs will expand so lungs will expand means some it maintains functional residual capacity once functional residual capacity is there alveoli will open it produces it reduces airway resistance so uh, the flow is uh, there is a, suppose there is a resistance how resistance is developed for for example if suppose if uh, if tube is like this tube rigid tube is there if air is entering into the uh, tube then one may some some amount of resistance if the tube expands expands what will happen the length is expanded that is surface is expanded so the resistance will come down the resistance will come down so that's why expansibility of the lungs we are expanding the lungs so that the resistance will come down once resistance is come down the more air enters into the lungs this is the, it reduces the air resistance and then it reduces the work of breathing so previously some of, because lungs are rigid now because of giving sending the positive air the lungs are expanded so resistance is decreases so that so once previously rigid lungs and now it is rigidity decreases so work of breathing will be decreased work of breathing means nothing but uh, i mean working of the accessory muscles that is chest retractions chest resistance and those things will be reduced work of breathing will reduce and it promotes also airway hydration because we are giving humidified air and oxygen blending so it promotes airway hydration previously it is dry air but we are giving the through humidification chamber so it may air become humidified so that the airway the water content in the airway is maintained that's why airway promotes airway hydration and provides positive airway pressure so we are giving the pressure um, uh, flow with some pressure that is positive air pressure and it spins the airway side as well as chest wall okay so it improves the alveolar ventilation by preventing atelectasis because uh, we are um, uh, maintain the functional residual capacity so thereby it prevents atelectasis that is atelectasis means it collapses it prevents the collapse of the alveoli and it increases the pharyngeal cross sectional air that is it expands healthy because we are sending positive flow no so expands healthy will be more expands healthy of the airways i mean uh, this thing okay and then uh, this uh, uh, mechanical sprinting of the airway elevates the expiratory lung volume and unload inspiratory muscles so that's why that means the work of the inspiratory muscles will be decreased work of breathing will be decreased and uh, it improve uh, the it uh, because we are giving humidified heated humidified air no 
so that decreases the it improves the pulmonary complex improves the mucociliary function mucociliary function so uh, this uh, humidified chamber what the, the, the purpose of the humidified i mean the work of the humidified chamber is usually done by our nose the way where the mucociliary uh, epithelium will be there and um, paranasal sinuses will be there that cools that cools the uh, the uh, inspired air and uh, it avoids the bronchoconstriction by dry air because we are giving hum humidified air it reduces the metabolic work for gas conditioning. Uh, next, uh, because we are giving positive airway pressure, it lung distension will be there and increases lung tidal capacity, tidal volume, and improves the alveolar recruitment. That is, more alveolar will be opened up. That is, recruitment. That's the other way it says recruitment. More alveolar will be recruited and improves ventilation, perfusion, matching. So, there must be equal. The ventilation means that is, the air enter into this. So surrounding the alveoli, the blood supply will be there. Surrounding the alveoli, that is perfusion. Perfusion method with blood supply. So both should be equal. So then only the gaseous exchange will occur. And uh, there is less atelectrotrauma or less purpose of, I mean, collapsing. There will not be chance of collapsing because continuous airway pressure we are giving. So it is, uh, alveoli will be distended. And barotrauma will be minimal. Barotrauma also minimum. And it reduces the obstructive apneas. Okay. So just remember it, it, it is a ventilation prevents atelectasis and it, uh, it will increase the pharyngeal, uh, pharyngeal cross sectional area. It, it reduces the work of breathing. It improves the mucociliary function and avoid bronchoconstriction. And it, it is uh, distance uh, causes the increases lung volume, tidal volume, and improves the alveolar recruitment. Uh, ventilation uh, perfusion, uh, perfusion matching will be there and reduce the apnea. You remember these things. Next, what are the indications in whom you have to connect CPAP? In newborns, in newborns, usually I think uh, most of us uh, are having CPAPs with missions with us, no? In newborns, it is it is indicated in respiratory distress syndrome that is especially in preterm babies and very low birth weight babies rds so we have to measure the silverman and anderson score depending on the score you can connect to the cpap and uh, pneumonias transient tachypnea of newborn apnea of prematurity meconium aspiration syndrome also we can connect to the cpap okay not only the preterm with respiratory distress, other causes of distress, there's pneumonia, TTNB, apnea, and prematurity, and mechanical aspiration also, we can connect this CPAP. In infants, it respiratory distress up to any case cause either viral pneumonias or bacterial pneumonia or including COVID pneumonias and bronchiolitis, we can connect and atelectasis, we can connect. And whenever after post activation, child is on the ventilator, now, a weaning of ventilator before weaning of ventilator you connect to the cpap then you can go for nasal then come come out and any airway abnormalities like tracheomalacia the tracheomalacia means weakness of the trachea in such condition also we can use cpap and some cases of congestive failure heart failure also we can use cpap these are the indications to start cpap so, so simultaneously you should know the what are the content of way in which condition you should not put cpap that is res severe respiratory failure. That is saturation is so much down. Sinus, jail is not at all breathing. Respiratory failure means complete absence of only gasping or complete absence of breathing. That in here it will be severe hypoxemia will be there and respiratory severe respiratory distress. In such condition, you should not connect that baby to the CPAP. And a severe cardiovascular instability in conditions also should not uh, connect. Any nasal fractures, facial fractures, and any uh, should not connect CPAP. Any air leaks, let me say, any pneumothorax conditions, so you should not. And better to avoid in coinal atresia, complete absence of coinal atresia, cleft palate, tracheoesophageal fistulas, congenital diaphragmatic hernia, and NEC, necrotizing enterocolitis. These are the conditions better to avoid CPAP. So coming to equipment. So now you have seen what is CPAP principle, what is the principle of CPAP we have seen. 
and what are the indications and contraindication we have enumerated. Now, what is the, what is the CPAP? What, what is the equipment? Let us see what is the equipment and that does it before connecting. Let us know what is CPAP. It has three major components. One is gas source, second one is pressure generator, third one is the patient interface. Okay. So gas source means where so they we are giving we are sending some forceful some gas into the machine. No? So that is gas source. Why where, where from where it is coming? It is from the so oxygen source to the blender. That is continuous supply of heated, humidified, blended air oxygen mixture. So from oxygen, uh, I mean uh, central oxygen or oxygen cylinder, oxygen will come. From air, the blender will collect the air and both it mixes air and oxygen and send the blended oxygen, blended oxygen, air oxygen mixture to the heated chamber, that is humidified chamber. There the air will be heated as well as humidified. And from there, it is from inspired limb, it will go to the patient. Okay. And uh, what is the flow rate? Usually four to eight liters per minute. We have to start with four to eight liters. Hmm? The flow rate, not less than four, not beyond eight should give. Okay. That is a gas source. Second one is pressure generator. So how the pressure generator, I already explained. The expiratory limb is submerged in the water. We were in, in deep, putting deep into the, uh, the water chamber. If you put more deeper, the pressure will be more. If I come uh, like that, it is directly proportional. And patient interface, that is patient interface means I already told you from mission to the patient lung, there must be uh, patient, there must be some interface will be there. That is nothing but nasal prongs. And it should be ad adequate seal should be there. Air, uh, air tight seal should be there. So here, so here gas source, that is blender, oxygen flow, flow both are coming and blended air and oxygen uh, water, I mean mixture will go to the humidification chamber where this is a heater, humidifier, the heater plate will be there in the finger flip. You, you insert the chamber here the, and we have to put a water mark, uh, put a water up to that mark. So there is an automatic filled water bag also will be there. If you connect the tube to the this automatic bag, water bag, the water will uh, will fill automatically to the up to that uh, line. Okay. So this water will be heated so that the big water become heat and the air that is coming from the source will go to the will enter into the water and coming out. So that's why. So it is heated as well as humidified. From there, the air will go to the inspiratory limb. So this is the inspiratory limb. And there is sensor will be there. One is here and one is at the um, near the baby. So here it records the temperature, the proximal and the temperature and the distal. So it should be in between 37, the, the temperature should be 37 because body, our body temperature is 37, no, it should maintain 37. That will be displayed here. That will be displayed on the chamber, humidified chamber. Okay. So it will go to the baby. This is, this is nothing but patient interface, patient interface. Okay. This is called patient interface. So mission and baby that in between the mission and baby, that is nasal prongs, that is patient interface. So these are the three components, gas source and second pressure and patient interface. The third one is the pressure generator, how CPAP is generated, CPAP is generated. So the expiratory limb, you insert down into the water chamber. So if you put down the pressure link is you put, uh, putting, uh, pulling up, the pressure will decreases. So this is pressure generator. These are the three components, gas source, patient interface and pressure generator. So patient interface, various patient interfaces like this nasal mask, different types of prongs, different types of prongs with various companies. Because sometimes you can use the ET tube and buy nasopharyngeal prongs also as an interface. Oh, okay. What are the steps to initiate the CPAP? 
so we, we have to prepare the circuit so we know the parts and we have to prepare the circuit how to connect and all that bubble chamber i will show the video at the end we can easily understand and a bubble chamber that is bubble chamber is nothing but water uh, the, the, the expected limb is inserted into the water chamber no that is called bubble chamber because we are able to see the expired air as a bubbles that's why it's called bubble chamber and the machine and first we have to fixing the cap secure the nasal prongs connecting the circuit insertion of the oral gas tube what is the purpose of oral gas tube suppose because you are giving positive pressure air into the nose so note nose is uh, it will go to the nasopharynx so from nasopharynx some amount of air will enter into the stomach that's why first we have to put the gas oral gas tube and we put the uh, gas tube to, uh, the tube should be opened always not it's not closed so that the extra air that is enter into the stomach will let out from through oral gas tube and we have to set the peep fi over to and flow we will see what so this is the setting setting a bubble cpap i already told this from the this is oxygen tube that so that is oxygen and air mixture from the blender and uh, flow uh, air and oxygen mixture will go this is this will go to the uh, humidified chamber this is humidified chamber and hum from humidified chamber the um, inspiratory inspiratory limb inspiratory limb that is tube as a, which is seen in the blue in color it will go here so there is sensor here at the proximal end and as well as the distal end so that to maintain the temperature that will be displayed here okay so, uh, and then the expiratory tube expiratory limb will coming this way it is white in color it will go directly to the bubble chamber this is bubble chamber this is bubble chamber and we can see the uh, bubbles here which a baby is expiring the uh, um, in air that air will go in to this, this chamber okay these are the uh, setting setup of this thing and what are the things we have to set we have to first initial settings what are things we have to do that is we have to set the pressure we can say have to set the flow and we have to set the fi water okay how to uh, set the pressure i already told you the immersion of the expir expiratory limb into the water chamber the water level being constant and we have to insert the tube into the water so how, what is there is a, there are gradations there on the i mean that there are gradations on the tube so in centimeters if it is inserted 5 cm that means it is giving 5 uh, pressure 4 cm 4 cm pressure okay so we can start with our rds respiratory distress syndromes or pneumonia so we can start with 5 cm whereas in apnea conditions we can start with 4 cm pressure and flow so here pressure range is 4 to 8 and flow and flow should be minimal to produce gentle audible bubbling so you can hear the bubbling sound in the water chamber so gentle audible um, sound you can able to hear then they can stop so usually it will be flow should be 4 to 8 liters so flow liter flow meter is there at the blender near blender so we can adjust the flow 4 to 8 liters per minute and so you can easily remember the pressure is 4 to 8 cm and flow is 4 to 8 liters so the i mean the numericals are same and similarly fi over to fi over to we can adjust the fi over to to 40% to 50% 40 to 50% okay uh, after adjusting the fi over to then you can see pulse oximeter reading of the baby it should be more than 94% if it is coming down then you can increase fi over to it coming up you can reduce the fi over to okay so guidelines for the cpap start nasal cpap at 5 to 6 cm fi over to 40 to 50 i already told you and increase cpap by 1 cm if required suppose initially 4 cm the depth of the expiratory limb into the water is 4 cm or 5 cm if you want more cpap the pressure conscious air pressure you can increase the depth maximum you can give up to 7 to 8 cm not beyond 8 8 cm 
now increase fio2 in small steps that is 5% to 80% you can go up to 80% every time 5% only increments every time should be 5% not more than like 10 11 10 20 like it should not go to it should not do only 5% 10%, 15%, 20, 25, like that, I have to increase. Only in steps of 5%, like that. Okay. Uh, clinical clinical MI monitoring, ABG, SPO2 for every 30 minutes on each step. Each step, we have, for every half an hour, we have to monitor clinically. You have to monitor. If ABG is available, you can do ABG. Or otherwise, saturation, we have to monitor. Clinical monitoring and saturation, we have to monitor. If child is not responding, uh, child CPAP requires more than 8 centimeters, and then in such condition, uh, we can say it is CPAP failure, then you connect to the mechanical ventilator. Okay, and what are things to monitor? So it includes infant's condition, we we'll see how the infant is, is, whether it is struggling or calm or quiet, we have to see, and whether whether airway is optimal, maintainable, and patient CPAP delivery circuit is good, patent, and no obstruction, and any prevention of complication which may arise from the nasal CPAP, those things you have to see. We can see them. This thing. So monitoring. What are the things you have to monitor? First is respiratory status of the child. You have to monitor. How how will respiratory status of the child will be monitored by counting the respiratory rate and see the work of breathing that is any excessive muscles are working any chest retractions are there but this is the and distress scoring that is uh, silverman anderson score SS score so this by, by this we can um, main monitor the respiratory status and we can see the oxygen saturation spo2 have to monitor and uh, how to uh, monitor cardiovascular status by counting the heart rate blood pressure and perfusion capillary filling time and GA status, gastrointestinal status by see the any, any abdominal distension. If abdominal distension is put a oral gastric tube to deflate. And we have to monitor, we have to auscultate the bowel sounds. And neurological state by uh, you observe the tone and active to the baby and responsiveness. You have to see. And thermoregulation very important. We have to maintain because these babies may usually go for frequently will go for hypothermia because always better to monitor the thermoregulation. Suppose if the ABG is there, we can monitor the blood gas, but we'll wait for 15 to 30 minutes after each setting. So suppose if settings are changed, immediately don't send the ABG. So wait for 15 to 30 minutes, then we send the sample for the ABC. And how to maintain the optimal airway, suction the mouth and nose, pharynx, as and when required, every third hourly or fourth hourly you can see and we have to maintain the adequate humidification of the circuit to prevent drying of secretion so humidification we have to take care because how to take care of the humidification check the water level in the chamber any rain out but means any uh, this what you call uh, dew drops in the tubes so those things should not be there uh, and temperature humidifier temperature should be 37 degrees centigrade And what are the complications to anticipate? You can, uh, you can, you may get pneumothorax. So suppose there are more pressure is in, say, existed in the CPAP, more CPAP. So the lungs, because very fragile, that may uh, open up into the pleura that causes pneumothorax. It occurs usually in acute phase. Um, and then nasal obstruction. Any any nasal sub obstruction is there. We have to remove that any secretions, any any obstructions. So we can take care of those obstruction. And the nasal septum erosion and necrosis can occur. So keep prongs always away from the septum. The prongs will be like this and should be away from the septum, not like this. Away from the septum. Use correct prong size and secure properly. So there is one. Um, I mean, uh, polythene paper like thing will be there. We can se select the sizes of the nares and, uh, and it uh, corresponds with the nasal prongs. And frequently, well, the septum for a uh, septal erosion is there. You can see septum damage, any redness, erythema on the septum, we should take care of those things. And gastric distension, I already told you, 
put the continuous aspiration of the stomach, uh, leaving an open in situ nasogastric tube, keep the infant in prone position. Lung over distension uh, in higher level of PEEP, suppose the pressure is more, the over distension of the um, can cause. So once over distension is the carbon dioxide retention is the cause and reduce the venous because once it is over distended, venous return will be decreased so that so blood will not go to the uh, I mean heart so that cardiac output will decrease child land in failure and increase pulmonary vascular resistance and decrease the uh, glomerular filtration rate and urine output so that the whole urine output also will be decreased. And there will be increased intracranial pressure. Okay. Next. What are the other nursing conditions? Positioning. Infant on nasal CPAP may be positioned supine, prone, or side lying, or always aligned, supported by the neck roll. Always, whatever may be there, whether supine, prone, or side lying. With the airway alignment supported by neck roll. Neck roll should be there and should be repositioned every three to six hours. So you can change the position once in three to six hours. And feeding is infant on bubble CPAP can be fed with orogastric feeds. And placing prone for after feeding also helps the passing stools and platelets. The airway will be decreased. So, how do you know whether we are giving adequate CPAP? So suppose we are, your settings are correct and child we are giving adequate C CPAP means baby become comfortable. Pink, previously child was ir uh, irritating, now baby is comfortable. And child will be previously it is not sinus, right? now it is pink. And no chest retractions, no grunt, no sinosis, normal capillary filling time, normal blood pressure. And saturation more than 90%. If ABC is available, you can see PAO2 to 60, PSEO2 to 40 to 60, PH 7.3 to 7.4. Okay. And if you take the chest x ray and count the inter intercostal space, post intercostal space, that is because you are, we are taking the film in the AP view. So we can, uh, we can see the, we can count the post intercostal space. If it is 7 to 8, it is hyperinflation 7 to 8 if you, if you count the intercostal space 7 to 8 it is hyperinflation so then it is need to reduce the peep how to reduce peep just pull the expiratory limb up if uh, a post intercostal space so only less than 5 that is hypoinflation the lungs are not expanded so in such cases we increase the peep by pushing down the ex expiratory limb okay when do you say CPAP is failure? CPAP is failure. That is persistent apnea on CPAP, persistent retraction, grunting, even though we're putting maximum level of the CPAP. Also, there is no improvement in the chest retractions or no grunt, still grunt is there. And not maintain the saturation, oxygen saturation, despite FIV2 going to more than 60%, PEEP going to eight centimeters. And if you say, if you take ABC, that is uh, blood gas, PAO2 is less than 50, and PSEO2 is more than 60, pH is less than 7.2, that is acidosis. And FIO2 requiring uh, more than 60% and PEEP more than 8%, by 8 centimeters. Then you can say it is CPAP is failure. Now you, you disconnect the CPAP and connect the baby to the mechanical ventilation. What are the troubleshoots? So whether the clinical condition compatible with the blood gas, well, uh, blood gas analysis is there or not, we can check. And check the necessary CPAP delivery system for proper functioning. Suppose whether the bubbling is correct, uh, I mean, first see the bubbles in the bubble chamber, whether bubble chambers are there or not. If bubbles are not coming means somewhere there is a leak. We have to check from the um, mouth, nose to the, up to the source, where somewhere where the, any leak we should identify. Uh, any water condensation circuit, I told you, you know, any uh, just like uh, um, moist in the uh, tubes, circuits. And suppose there are any nasal, uh, suppose any block in the nose. So those such conditions, we have to uh, see, uh, take out the um, nasal punks, then any block is there, you can remove. 
Uh, suppose the correctly fitting or uh, prongs is there or not, we have to see, see check the size and position. And um, uh, so we we'll check whether with the high CPAP level, whether baby is responding or not, we we'll check the high, uh, if you increase the CPAP. If there is no improvement, then it is CPAP is failure. If uh, the infant continues to show evidence of respiratory failure, that means um, uh, saturation is not picking up and just the grunting will be the, is there and the chest retraction is still there, then you go better to intubate the child. And so now we know the principles of the CPAP and what are the parts you know, how to connect the CPAP we discussed and what are the indications for CPAP or what are contraindication for CPAP we have seen and how to monitor when child baby is on CPAP we've seen, and what are the troubleshoots are there and when to uh, react as all we have seen. Now, child is uh, stable, then how long we can give CPAP? When to wean off, that means when to remove the CPAP. So it is clinical condition has become passive, that is clinical condition is improving, and remove when FIO2 is 40% and PEEP 4 centimeters without increasing work of everything. So we are, you know, by improving, you are slowly coming, uh, I mean, uh, decreasing the FIO2 and PEEP, no? First FIO2 decrease, then PEEP decrease, the tube, will, uh, the expected tube will pull out like this. So once it reaches a 40%, FIO2 40% and PEEP 4, then that is the time and there is should not be child is not having any respiratory distress. There is no increased work, no chest retractions, no grunting, child no apnea, no bradycardia, and uh, oxygen requirement is decreased. So this is the time to wean off the uh, CPAP. How to wean? First, reduce the FIO2 by five percent every, every time huh? till it reaches the forty percent. So previously it is sixty percent FIO2. Now you reduce the 55 next to 50 next to 45 next to 40 so this is the cutoff point 40 and reduce cpap by one centimeter decrements to four centimeters so previously it was say six centimeters now you reduce to the five centimeters next to four centimeters like that um, you may remove cpap at the level of cpap four centimeters and fi over to 40 percent i already told you and uh, is there any role of cpap in COVID, yes, bubble CPAP uh, may be used in the newborns in children with severe hypoxemic conditions. And bubble CPAP therapy should be treated as a aerosol generating therapy. And the appropriate PP should be employed. So once you, because we are putting bubble CPAP, so aerosols will be generated. No, that's why always when baby we are putting connected the CPAP, uh, so always we have to self protection with the PPE, have to wear PPE. And uh, the prong size should be appropriate and to reduce the any leaks. And at, uh, because should not, should not be, because it is aerosol spread, no COVID. So better to, everything should be airtight. Attempt to filter the expiratory gas should consider the effects of that filtration on the therapy efficacy. So these are the ways, this is humidified chamber, I'm a humidifier, and this is humidified chamber. So this is the finger finger flip. You you press down the finger flip so that the chamber will enter inside. Then we can get the click sound. That means it is locked. It is locked like this. Okay. Now uh, this is a, a water uh, bag connected to the here. There will be one tube and it, this tube will connect it to the here the water bag so that the water automatically fills the uh, chamber. No need to remove, remove the remove and pour the water. Okay. And and this is it from the blender. It will go the oxygen. I mean uh, air and oxygen mixture will go to the humidifier chamber. Okay. And uh, here the power uh, sen sensor and power as there is a color sockets are there. We can connect and. Uh, and then, and the, here, the sensors will connect here in the proximal limb and distal limb, that is the inspected limb, no? distal limb, we can connect one, one sensor and proximal limb, one connector, okay. And this is to fill the bubble C chamber, bubble, uh, bubble chamber with water and we have to maintain the water level 
and this is the expected limb you if, if you if you put down the cpap will increase if you lift up the cpap will decrease this is flow rate we can adjust the flow rate 4 to 8 liters per minute and uh, this is setting of the cpap i have told you whether to down and out and these are the one is the, uh, the inspector limb and one is the expected limb okay thank you thank you so much sir